So yes, my name's Camilla Tolmin, and I have the pleasure of being director of IIID, which makes me Salim's boss. But as you can well imagine, he doesn't really need much bossing about, thank goodness. My own background is very much from the West African region, particularly the Sahel, um, where for many years I've followed a series of farming and livestock keeping communities, cope with high rainfall uncertainty, coping with droughts, coping with risk, and watching how at that community level they build up resilience on the environment front, on the social front, and on the economic front. So that understanding and need to understand how communities can work together at household and broader level I think is critical to understanding how you build resilience more broadly. I have to admit it's my first time in Bangladesh and at a CBA workshop. I always used to wonder what was going on when half my staff would disappear off and they'd say, I'm going to a CBA workshop, Camilla. So now, now I know. And it's been a great pleasure to have the possibility of ID working alongside uh, BCAS um, on the organization of this workshop this year. I think Atik and Salim are a great team, as are all of the people working with them, both here uh, in Dhaka and also my colleagues in London. I understand that 8,000 or more people have been following the proceedings through the virtual um, cyber space, so that's fantastic. Thanks to all of our comms people to make that possible. And I'm glad it's been such a success despite the political uncertainties and the absence of a field trip. Field trips are hugely important, as I'm sure you know, for listening, watching, learning, and getting that sense of how ideas map out into practice on the ground. I was really pleased that this year's conference has been focusing on mainstreaming climate change, um, particularly in government planning. And I understand that as a result of the workshop this year, a group of governments have come together to say, yes, we want to learn together on how we can make this more effective. And IID is certainly very pleased to offer what support we can for the work of this group. And it's going to be great that next year we'll be looking at financing for community-based adaptation. Because getting the financial architecture right is critical if you want to make sure that money goes to the right place uh, at the right scale. I sometimes think about financial architecture using the analogy of plumbing. A lot, a lot of finance tends to go through a few big pipes. There can often be quite a lot of leaks and it often doesn't go where it's meant to. I think we need to design a financial architecture, a plumbing system if you like, that involves lots and lots and lots of much smaller pipes that can reach right down to the grassroots. So let's think about how we can design, how we can redesign that financial plumbing in a way which is going to be more successful. This kind of gathering is vital to both local and global debates with its very strong focus on community-based action grassroots knowledge and power and shifting decision making from up there to down here. There's a big conversation going on at the moment about where next for global development. Mary referred to the Dublin Castle event that her foundation 
was jointly responsible for putting on. And it was one of the most unexpectedly energetic and exciting events that I've been to for a long time. Largely because of this big share of participants who came from the grassroots. And that just added a, an impetus and an immediacy and a kind of can-do quality that's often not there at big, big conferences. So we've got the 2015, what's going to happen after 2015 when the Millennium Development Goals are meant to have been delivered? Will we have MDGs Mark II? What's going to happen to the Sustainable Development Goals that were proposed at the Rio conference in June of last year? And how does the climate change negotiation process and COP21 in Paris in 2015, how does that fit in? So you've got lots of strands of debate going on at that global level. And often it doesn't listen nearly enough to what's happening on the ground. So you need to raise your voices, you need to say, you know, you guys discussing at that global level, listen, learn, and if your debates aren't going to make a difference to what happens to ordinary and extraordinary people at that grassroots level, then we need to rethink how it's done. That should be the test for any or all global frameworks. IID will continue to invest in climate change action, linking with the newly established International Center on Climate Change and Development, which has been set up in Dhaka under the guidance of my colleague Salim. And we'll have a meeting this afternoon to hear more about their work. And we're building climate change impacts and implications into all IID's work with partners and hoping that together with you, with Mary, with a whole range of other actors that we can indeed achieve that ambitious, fair climate deal in 2015 that eluded us so cruelly at Copenhagen. Because while adaptation is clearly vital and Bangladesh shows how enormously important it is to invest in that, while adaptation is vital, we must win the argument and action to cut global greenhouse emissions because there are limits to adaptation. So there's lots to be done. Effective climate action has to build up from below, meeting governments and business coming down from the top. Atik, Salim, thanks to you and to your organizations, all your colleagues, this tremendous array of organizations on the back of the document you've just received. Thanks to all of you for bringing us together and let's see how we can join hands and make sure that that 2015 conference brings us to where we need to be. Thank you. <laughs>